Welcome to Heart to Heart with Anna, featuring your host, Anna Jaworski. Our program is a program designed to empower the CHD or congenital heart defect community. Our program may also help families who have children who are chronically ill by bringing information and encouragement to you in order to become an advocate for your community. Now, here is Anna Jaworski. Welcome to the third season of Heart to Heart with Anna, a show for the congenital heart defect community. Our purpose is to empower members of our community with resources, support, and advocacy information. I was so happy when I started to do research for this show because I saw that there had been several studies done investigating the use of alternative medicine in children with chronic illness. One particular study I found online was published in the Canadian Medical Association Journal, and it specifically addressed alternative medicine in the congenital heart defect community. This article led me to another article published in Pediatrics entitled, Pediatric Use of Complementary and Alternative Medicine, Legal, Ethical, and Clinical Issues in Decision-Making. I will have links to both of these articles in the bio section of the Heart to Heart with Anna website, since both articles are freely available online. For the purposes of today's show, I'd like to state that it appears that the use of complementary and alternative medicine, or CAM, is not uncommon. The researchers in the article in the Pediatrics Journal even stated that educating parents about the potential harms and benefits of all treatments, conventional or CAM, should be a priority. What is complementary and alternative medicine? It includes, but is not limited to, vitamins and minerals, herbals such as echinacea, homeopathic cold and teething remedies, fish oils, probiotics, massage, faith healing, chiropractic care, aromatherapy, and aboriginal healing. The information contained in our show is not intended to constitute comprehensive professional medical services or treatment of any kind. The content should not be used for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Our show should be considered as an educational service only. Our show today is entitled Health Alternatives for Congenital Heart Defect Survivors, and today's guest is Carol Harrington. Carol Harrington's journey began out of love for her daughter, Maddie, who was born with severe congenital heart defects and had three open-heart surgeries before she was five years of age. As a result of her surgery, she developed serious medical conditions that were not easily treated. Carolyn spent countless hours researching natural ways of healing, and it soon became her passion. She even got certified as a holistic health practitioner and learned other healing techniques. Through her research, Carolyn found many home remedies that were popular in her healing groups and had an idea. Why not enhance them with immune-boosting ingredients she found in her research? A decade after Carolyn set out to help Maddie get better, she chose to share her healthy products with others. Maddie's Healthy Products debuted in 2009, and today it is in more than 32,000 retail stores across the United States. Carolyn resides in Pittsburgh with her husband, Bob, three sons, Kevin, Andrew, and Michael, and of course, Maddie. Welcome to Heart to Heart with Anna, Carolyn. Hi. Thank you very much for having me. Well, I'm so excited to have you on the show today because right now it is cold and flu season in the United States. So our topic is very seasonal, very pertinent to what is going on in our country right now. Absolutely. There's so much people can do, and it's such a hot topic right now with everything that's going on. It is. So many of our little ones who are born with complex congenital heart defects seem susceptible to getting sick, especially during cold and flu season. Was Maddie frequently sick as a baby and a toddler? She was, and she had a particular bark. She had a windpipe that was either collapsed or it was narrowed, and so she had this bark when every time I took her out of the house, it sounded like a croupy cough, and people would look at me, and it was amazing. So she was quite a bit, and we knew we just had to boost her immune system, so there was a lot we did, and I tried to work with her. How old was she before she didn't have the croupy cough sound? Well, she kind of outgrew it. They told me that might have happened. So when she was very young in strollers, probably under a year old, that's when she just had this bark. And even when she wasn't sick, if she had any kind of a cough, it was a sparking cough. So that was really troublesome because everybody looked at me thinking, what are you bringing this child out of the house for? She did outgrow (laughs) it probably by age three or four, maybe five years Mm -hmm. old. So it wasn't quite as serious then, but people just looked at me so surprised, like, oh, my gosh. 
croup is so scary. My firstborn had an episode or two, not anything constant like what you're talking about. And I remember doing all the things that I had been told to do, run a hot shower, put the baby in the bathroom with a hot shower, and the steam would probably help it, and nothing was working. And so my husband was a nurse working in the emergency room, and I took the baby to the emergency room because I was so panicked what to do as a first-time mom. So I can imagine what it must feel like if you're having to deal with that on a chronic basis. Oh, I know. And luckily, it was my third child. So if it was your first child, I couldn't even imagine what it would have been like. But by your third child, you're a little more comfortable and had seen a few croupy coughs and different sickness. So you're a little more at ease. But then having the heart defects, it brought a different element to it. So then it was like, okay, let's see what we could do with her. So I did a lot of research. Well, you did, and you even became a certified holistic health practitioner. Can you tell me what that entailed and what you studied for that certificate? Sure. After her surgery, she had three surgeries, as you had said. Two of them were open heart by age five. Well, after her last surgery, she started developing alopecia. She was losing her hair, and she had Mm -hmm. psoriasis all over her body, and it was absolutely horrendous just to look at her. And so I took her to the doctor's. And they couldn't do anything about it because all the treatments for that young of a child were very invasive. And they said, there's not much we can do besides like steroid treatment, but you can't put steroids all over someone's body. So I ended up taking her to a natural path. The natural path gave her a homeopathic remedy, and all of a sudden it started going away. That's when the light bulb went off in me. I wasn't really into the natural healing before that. So at that point, I started doing research, and the research became my passion. And I stayed up all hours of the night. And luckily, we have the Internet now, so you can do all kinds of research. And read everything I could. Then I realized, okay, I started having a knack for it, and I went and got certified through a college And it really was an online because I had three children at the time, so I couldn't go away to school. So it was an online Mm -hmm. course, but it really evened out all my studying and really supported everything that I was doing at the time, and it really worked out very well. When I was looking up alternative medicine for those with congenital heart defects, I was so happy to see that some of the professional journals had actually addressed this. And one of the things that they talked about was a concern that more and more people are actually using alternative or complementary medicine and that an alarming number of parents are not telling their doctors about that. And they said that there are actually some contraindications to using some of this type of medicine depending on what drugs your child takes. Did you study about that when you were getting your certificate? Did you learn about what kinds of things have counter reactions? You do. What I learned is that there were counter interactions with different drugs, different herbs. And so I did not want to go into the herbal side of things for exactly that reason. It gets a little Mm -hmm. complicated. There are a lot of herbs that interact with different drugs. And with my doctor, luckily, I had wonderful doctors with Maddie. They were very much supportive of me, most of them. I did run into a few that weren't. And what I tried to do is more food-based and do stuff that was boosting the immune system with foods. Now, everybody Mm -hmm. can pretty much eat good foods. There's no counter-interactions with those. So I did stay away from the herbs because of that reason. I was not comfortable going into that without being an herbalist. That's a whole other discipline that I wasn't prepared for. So it was more boosting with the immune system and doing different techniques that anybody can do and that wouldn't interact with medications. That's great. That sounds perfect. (laughs) Because, Mm -hmm. like you said, doing something with food, you would think that that would be something that almost anybody could understand and could get the benefit of. So there's this whole negative stigma that goes on with some people regarding anything that's non-traditional. And you said already that maybe there were a couple of doctors that Maddie had that didn't want you doing something that was non-traditional. What did you learn becoming this holistic health practitioner that helped you to know that you should be supplementing what you do normally to help boost Maddie's immune system. Well, what I learned was that really it's all about feeling in your heart what you need and in your gut what you need to do for your child. You know best your child. And doctors are very well educated. They help quite a bit. This isn't about alternative versus a doctor. This is about working with them. And so Mm. in working in conjunction with them, you know your child the best. And there were times when I had different doctors telling me different things, and I said, I'm the one that's got to make the final decision because my daughter can't. So what I would do is really do the research search as much as I can, got educated with whatever situation was at hand, and then I really followed my gut and knew when I went to bed at night that no matter what I did, I did the best I could for my child Mm -hmm. by researching as much as I can. And that worked best for us. I mean, she is healthy as 
a horse, you would never <laughs> know. She never had a problem. And I really think it's because we really tried hard to treat her as normal a child as possible and really keep that immune system boosted, keep her healthy by doing feeding her right and working to keep her as healthy as we could. Right, right. That sounds good. And I really love what you said about trusting your gut. I do think that we moms and dads, grandparents too, all of us caregivers of our children, we need to trust our gut. And sometimes that might mean doing something a little special to boost their immune system, especially right now. It is cold and flu season in our country, but worse than that, right now there's all this news about the Ebola virus, and it has a lot of people scared. What do you think is the most important thing that we parents of children with congenital heart defects need to know at this time? Well, the first thing is don't panic because the news really hypes it up. And Mm -hmm. so if you get scared, your children feel that. And I think the whole atmosphere within the house gets panicky. And stress is one of the worst immune killers there is. Stress Mm -hmm. and Another one is, at this point, make sure your child and make sure your family is eating correctly. Now, of course, Halloween is right at our doorstep (laughs) here, but sugar is such a huge immune killer also that you really don't want to give sugar. And I know with Halloween here, you're going to have to do a little bit. But if someone gets sick, don't feed them sugar. Your immune system gets depressed for hours after you have any kind of sugar. So there are things you can do. And there's a couple of ingredients and a couple products that if you have in your home and you know they're very antimicrobial, antiviral, antibacterial, if you have them in your home and know how to use them, then you can be at ease and know that you're giving your child and your family the best shot you can. Okay, that's good advice. I really like it that you said don't panic. I think, unfortunately, because the people on the news and on the radio, you hear so much. And I live in Texas right now, and we've actually had a couple of the Ebola cases right here in Texas. And so it's on everybody's mind. And, in fact, we even had one of our schools that's just a few miles down the road from me closed because some children had been on an airplane where one of the nurses who had treated somebody with Ebola was on. And so they closed the school for two days and sterilized the school, and those children are staying out for 21 days. They're just not willing to take any chances. And I think to myself, those poor families. (laughs) It really is something that's scary, but I think we do need to not panic. And like you said, watch what we're eating. Don't feed the kids too much sugar. That's all something that we can do. What advice would you give to people in the congenital heart defect community regarding daily care of a baby or a child born with a heart defect to keep them healthy? It sounds like no sugar, but on a positive side, what can we do? Really, it's about boosting the immune system. So you want to feed them foods that really boost the immune system. I mean, garlic is wonderful. So when we make a salad, we put fresh garlic in it. And ginger is another one. Like I said, there's no sugar. So it's even how many kids drink sodas. Well, we don't have soda in our household. And actually, when Maddie was young, because of her condition, she was not allowed to have any sugar. She would actually get migraines. So in a way, I wasn't even allowed to feed her sugar, which I think really helped her quite a bit. But it's about keeping that immune system strong. And like I said, having a few colloidal silver is one thing that you can give to a child when they start to get sick at the first sign of a fever at the first sign of them not feeling well you can give them colloidal silver you can give them some oil of oregano and these are more food-based products that wouldn't interfere with medications and you do it the first sign of getting sick and then you can help them quite a bit and they don't have the sickness quite as long. I always tell people, your immune system is like a muscle. You need to exercise it. So you need to do things. When a child gets sick, don't panic. Let the fever go for a little while. So many parents, as soon as a child gets a fever, they run to the Tylenol, run to the Advil and the Motrin. Well, a fever is there to kill off any kind of an infection. Sometimes you need to let that fever go a little, and that really helps boost the immune system. So there are a lot of techniques you can do to keep that immune system strong, and it really helped Maddie in our case, and it helped my whole family as far as them getting sick. When they get sick, it's not nearly as long as it would normally be, what everybody tells you, and they hardly get sick anyway, so... I really think we were on to something there. It sounds like it. And you have three other kids that you were using the same techniques with, so you could see quite easily whether or not that worked with the other children. 
Absolutely. It's funny because when the kids get sick, the first thing I do is actually put them in a bath and kind of get their, their fever a little higher. And of course, you have to watch. You can't let it go too high. If they have a high fever, you would never do that. But the mild fevers, I would actually put them in a bath and let their fever get a little higher because that's what really kills off the infection. When you give them the Motrins and the Advils and reduce the fever, you're actually crippling their immune system. And that's exactly what you wouldn't want to do. It's about strengthening the immune system, not crippling it. Well, this all sounds like great advice. It's time for us to take a quick commercial break, but don't leave yet because coming up, we're going to talk to Carolyn about what made her decide to start her own company and what kind of products she produces when we return to Heart to Heart with Anna. Anna Jaworski has written several books to empower the congenital heart defect or CHD community. These books can be found at Amazon.com or at her website, www.babyheartspress.com. Her bestseller is The Heart of a Mother, an anthology of stories written by women for women in the CHD community. Anna's other books, My Brother Needs an Operation, The Heart of a Father, and Hypoplastic Left Heart Syndrome, a handbook for parents, will help you understand that you are not alone. Visit babyheartspress.com to find out more. Welcome back to our show, Heart to Heart with Anna, a show for the congenital heart defect community. Today we are talking with Carolyn Harrington about health alternatives for our congenital heart defect survivors. The information contained in our show is not intended to constitute comprehensive professional medical services or treatment of any kind. The content should not be used for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Our show should be considered as an educational service only. Back to Carolyn. Carolyn, can you tell our listeners about how you came up with your company, Maddie's Healthy Products? Sure. Well, as I had said before, after Maddie had her last surgery, she developed different conditions, and so it became my passion. And I even remember telling my husband, Bob, I don't even know where this is going, but I'm like a sponge with all this information. And what happened is I started finding home remedies that everybody claimed they worked, and they did work, and then I thought, I'll use the research and the different healing techniques, in particular the applied kinesiology, which is muscle testing. And I use muscle testing to say, okay, what ingredients, for instance, we know buckwheat honey works great for coughs or any honey works for cough, but what can we add to it to really boost the immune system? And once I came up with these good remedies, we gave them to family and friends, and it became very popular. And my husband, who's a consummate salesman, said, you know what, we have to let the general public benefit from these. Um, Well, first of all, he said, let's take them to the public. I said, oh, my God, are you kidding me? I have four kids. I can't do that. Then a few (laughs) few years later, we said, okay, let's try it. In 2009, we decided to form Maddie's Healthy Products, and we started with the two cough syrups. Oh, okay. So you just started with two products to begin with. Mm -hmm. Now, this was in 2009, so the Internet was alive and well. Is that how you started selling, mostly on the Internet, or was it word of mouth? How did you get the news out about your products? Well, what we did, we didn't even have a product. We just had mock-ups done, and we went to the Natural Products Expo in Anaheim, California in March of 2009 and went with these mock-ups and took out a booth, and we wanted to see if there was any interest, and the interest was tremendous, especially the pediatricians, because that's all they were recommending at the time was buckwheat honey anyways. And we said, well, we've got it in our product, but look what else we've got in this product. we got nine other immune-boosting ingredients in this product, because we figured if you have a cough, don't you most likely have a cold? Let's boost the immune mm-hmm. system. So we started with that, and then when we got the excitement going, then we went to the retailers, and we actually went right to the retailers and started selling through retailers. We did sell online, but it's kind of secondary because we really wanted to support our retailers at the time. Oh, wow. So you just jumped in with both feet, didn't you? Oh, we sure did. That was quite a time, (laughs) quite a busy time back then. Still yeah, is. that sounds very exciting. And I mean, especially since you had a lot of research to back up what you did, you had a lot of confidence in what you were putting out there. We did, and that's basically what we we tried to get something that we knew, at least through the healing circles, really worked. It was anecdotal or whatever. We would use that and then enhance it with all the research that I had done and that I had learned. And then again, with the muscle testing, it put a different element to it because then I pretty much knew that we had something there. So it was a nice combination of coming up with the different formulas, and then we went to different chemists and worked with different people to help us really refine them and make them suitable for retail. Wow. Well, what was the biggest challenge that you had with creating your company that sounds like you were working with a lot of different people? 
The biggest challenge is keeping your confidence up because so many times, especially since I hadn't been in the workforce, since I had children, so it had been about 15 years since I was working, it's really about having confidence because if you start your own business, it's a roller coaster ride. And we always say every mm-hmm. problem is an opportunity. And we really try to mm-hmm. live by that because you can't guarantee that every day is going to be the best day. And the, problems do arise and so if you always feel like okay this problem's an opportunity where can we go with this that was really the biggest challenge of just keeping focused bringing our products out and that's really where it was going well what was your most popular product for congenital heart defect survivors because i imagine that's a big chunk of your population or maybe if you're going through retailers you don't really know who is purchasing your products We don't, right? With retailers, we don't really know. But the first two that we came out with was the cough syrups because since they were food-based, there's no drug interactions. I had a woman call me up one time and said, you know, I gave my child an extra dose. Is that dangerous? And I said, well, do you care how much maple syrup you put on their pancakes? That's how safe (laughs) our cough syrups are. So it's really, and yet they work fabulous. I mean, people say their cough stopped within one dose. So it really, right, those were perfect for that for anybody with a caught, with a heart defect. And then we also came out with the vapor rub and the baby chest rub, which complement those because a lot of times people prefer a vapor rub. And those are also good for people with heart defects because they're not ingested. They're just done with essential oils. And they also work very well. All of our products are food-based, so they would all be good for anybody with a heart defect. And that's kind of the way we're going with it. We're using food products and really safe, not herbal necessarily, and that way you don't have to worry about if you're on medications because not just heart defect, but other children and even it seems like everybody's on some kind of medication, and so you never have to worry about that with our products. Right. So because it's food-based, are there expiration dates on your medications or your products, I should say, since they're not medicine? There are expiration dates, but the beauty of honey is it lasts forever. And, of course, with the other ingredients, it might not necessarily, but we went through the testing, and we had a six-year shelf life on ours, which is much higher than a lot of other products. But we went through the shelf life testing, and, yeah, they do have an expiration date on them. Okay. Well, that's good to know. And in that way, mm-hmm. I know so many times I'll pick something out of the cabinet, and I'm like, ooh, when did I buy this? <laughs> I have to try and remember right. if it's good or not. So this is great. You know, you have a six-year shelf life, and it probably has a date stamped on it then somewhere so that people can know when it was that they bought it. They do. They do have it stamped right on there. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. See, that's perfect. Well, what is the most important lesson you've learned in becoming a holistic health practitioner and starting your own holistic company? I'm so glad you asked that because this is the one message that if there's any message I could give, it's that there is so much you can do. Doctors are wonderful. They did wonders for Maddie. So again, this isn't about competing with them. It's about doing things for your child, for your family, for yourself, and boosting the immune system. If you can handle the minor things, it strengthens your body for the major things that come about. And so it's always about taking control, empowering people with different strategies, different things they can do to make themselves healthier, and that way they can live a healthier, happier life. I just absolutely love that. I'm all about empowering people. In fact, that's what this whole show is about, that when we come together and we share knowledge, we can be empowered. And I just absolutely love that message. That is so amazing. I like how you educated yourself, and now you're in the process of educating others. Well, we are running out of time. Let me do another quick commercial. Don't go yet. We'll be right back with Heart to Heart with Anna. Anna Jaworski has spoken around the world at congenital heart defect events, and she is available as a keynote or guest speaker for your event. Go to hearttoheartwithanna.com to learn more about booking Anna for your event. You can also find out more about the radio program. Keep up to date with CHD resources and information about advocacy groups, as well as read Anna's weekly blog. Anna wants you to stay well-connected and participate in the CHD community. Visit hearttoheartwithanna.com today. Welcome back to Heart to Heart with Anna. Today's show has just been so much fun. We have learned so much, or I have learned so much, about holistic medicine. And I really wasn't 
very familiar with it before, but we are talking with Carolyn Harrington of Maddie's Healthy Products. Today's show is not intended to constitute comprehensive professional medical services or treatment of any kind. The content should not be used for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Today's show is to be considered as an educational service only. And Carolyn, I want to thank you because you educated me a lot about the holistic side of treatment and how we can be treating our children with healthy food products instead of just having to always reach for the Tylenol or the Advil. So I want to thank you so much for that. Well, thank you very much for having me. I'm always excited to talk about this because when you learn something, you want to pass it on and let other people benefit from it. And so you're just giving me an avenue to do that. So I really appreciate it and I thank you for that. Well, you are more than welcome. I'm so happy to hear that you like honey because it seems like whenever I get sick, the first thing that happens is I get laryngitis and my wonderful husband will make me hot tea with honey and lemon. And that is the one thing that I swear by whenever I get sick. So I'm glad to hear that you also approve of honey (laughs) and that you use it in your products. Absolutely. It's a wonderful product. It really, really is, and I know that a lot of people will go buy local honey because that can even boost your immune system even more for those of us like me who suffer from local allergies. If you get the local honey in your diet, a lot of times that will help take care of some of the allergy problems that you might have. Absolutely, and that's the beauty of natural products like this is that they always got hidden benefits in them. So when you take something, you know, like I put ginger in my water every day because it also boosts the immune system. I figure, oh gosh, we really need it now. But there's all these hidden benefits that you have when you do your research and really find natural ways of healing. That's the beauty of it. Love it. Mm -hmm. One of my friends likes the crystallized ginger. Does having it crystallized like that, does it take away any of the benefit or is it still just as good? I don't know if it's just as good, but it still is very good. And I know crystallized ginger is great for pain. If you have headaches or migraines, it's good. Or if you have some of those, that neurological, neuralgia type pain, crystallized ginger is wonderful for that. It's also good for a stomach. So there's a lot you can do, and it comes in all forms. Powdered ginger is still good. I use the fresh ginger just because I like it. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Carolyn. I cannot believe half an hour has gone by already. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, I loved it. Thank you. Well, me too. This was so much fun. And just one more time for my wonderful listeners, this information is not medical advice, but hopefully you will go to your doctors. Tell them what you learned on the show today. Look up Maddie's Healthy Products. I will have the links on my website. It will be in the bio section. So just look for this episode in the bio section. Then you can just click directly on the link, and it will take you to Maddie's Healthy Products or go to www.maddieshealthyproducts.com. She's also on Facebook. If you have a question about what you should give your child and your child does have a heart defect and you're afraid to go get something in the pharmacy, why don't you consider Maddie's Healthy Products and see if it works for you too. I hope you've enjoyed today's show as much as I have. It's been so informative. Please come back next week on Tuesday at noon Eastern Time. Until then, find and like us on Facebook. Check out our website, hearttoheartwithanna.com and our Cafe Press Boutique. Follow our radio show and remember, my friends, you are not alone. Thank you again for joining us this week. We hope you've been inspired and empowered to become an advocate for the congenital heart defect community. Heart to Heart with Anna with your host, Anna Jaworski, can be heard every Tuesday at 12 noon Eastern Time. We'll talk again next week. Music.